Getting into this unboxing, let's go ahead and start with the box itself. It's just very simple and basic. The front has a picture of the device and it merely says Apple TV, which it of course also says on the top of the device. And it does so just with an Apple logo and it says TV. Now both sides are blank, whereas the bottom and the top say Apple TV 4K. Now on the back, it does tell you some services that will function with the new video formats, most notably iTunes movies, which is the cheapest way to rent and buy 4K movies. Surprisingly, Apple has some really great deals with the movie studios and you can buy them for as cheap as $20, which is awesome. Pretty much all other services are 40. And of course this is 4K and it does include 4K HDR options. This is the base 32 gigabyte model. There is also an optional 64 gigabyte upgrade. Now, something else that's really cool about this Apple TV is that it will support Dolby Atmos in the future with an update, which is Dolby's 3D surround sound. And it also includes support for Dolby Vision. So this is the first streaming box that will support both once Atmos support comes to the device. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and proceed with this unboxing. So using my knife, I'm just going to cut through the plastic wrap right here that is protecting the box. And we're just going to pull the plastic wrap off like so. Now lifting the lid should reveal the box sitting directly on top with the remote over to the right hand side. Now this remote is slightly different from the previous generation that was released late 2015. And those of you who are familiar with it will immediately notice. Now we have a white ring around menu and the menu button itself is slightly recessed whereas the ring sticks up above it. So this is so you'll be able to easily find the menu button without looking at it and without having to fumble. You can kind of just feel it. It's actually a really nice change. I I personally would have preferred if they would have just left it black because this ring alone does provide some really great tactile differentiation between the different buttons. And also one more thing I'll say on this remote, I absolutely love it. I've been using it ever since the fourth gen Apple TV was released and I've only had to charge it a handful of times, maybe at most three times a year. That's how absolutely fantastic this remote is. And it just charges using the same method that you would charge your iPhone with. So you can use the same brick, same lightning cable, everything. Now, right below the remote over on the right hand side, we do have some cables. Actually, we just have one cable. It is the power cable for the set-top box itself. Let's go ahead and set that back in there. So we just plug this into the back and then we plug the other end into a US wall outlet. And it should just immediately power up once you do that and you'll be able to begin the setup process. And I'm failing miserably at doing this. Of course, you can just pull that tab. It was kind of hard to do that on camera there. But pulling the Apple TV box out we can go ahead and do the same thing, just pulling this plastic tab here. And there we go. This is the exact same look as the previous generation. And we also do have to pull this piece off to reveal the ports on the back. And Apple still chose to go with that really, really shiny black around the sides, which isn't too big of a deal since you're not going to be handling this device, but it does mean that it's going to scratch more easily. So you really do have to be careful when you're plugging anything into the IO here on the back. And by the way, you pretty much just have your AC power input. You also have your HDMI and then ethernet port right here, that's it. So if you wanted to, you could connect an ethernet cable. That way you could potentially take advantage of a faster ethernet connection for streaming 4K intensive movies and videos. Now below where the Apple TV was, if we pull that out, we have this little sheet right here, or rather this little packet of information. It just says, let's get started. So pulling this off. It walks through some of the basics of the Apple TV and the remote. For those who are new to the device, we have this Apple TV info sheet, and we also have two Apple logo stickers, just like with all of the other Apple products we have unboxed today. And below all of that, you have another lightning cable that of course you use to charge up the remote and you only need it just a handful of times a year, which is absolutely great. Even if you use the device every day, which I've been doing again since 2015. So that's it, that's the Apple TV. Let's go ahead and plug it in and I'm going to show you guys how basic the setup is for this device. 
So before plugging it in, I wanted to show you guys something pretty interesting. Over here on the right, I have the fourth gen Apple TV. So this new 4K One's predecessor. And on the left, I have the 4K Apple TV. You'll notice that we have some new vents over on the 4K One. That's presumably because this thing is an absolute powerhouse. It has an A10X processor over this one here. So that means what we're rocking here is basically the same CPU as what's found in the latest iPad Pro models which is of course to accommodate that 4K HDR streaming. So that's absolutely insane. This thing seems to require a heat management system, whereas its predecessor simply didn't. All right, and as far as setting it up goes, it's just telling me to pair the remote right now, which I can do just by pushing in on the trackpad, and I can continue by selecting English. Now going through this setup process, I'm just going to set it up with a device. It requires iOS 9.1 or later. This was a really awesome feature when it launched. Essentially, you just have to ensure that your device is unlocked. You can use either an iPad, an iPhone, or an iPod Touch, and that it's connected to the Wi-Fi network that you want to actually hook up your Apple TV to. Once it is connected to that, you need to enable Bluetooth and you just hold it next to the Apple TV. Really, that's it. Once you do, you'll receive a screen that looks like this. It says set up new Apple TV. You just tap on setup right there and it will connect to it. And it just requires that you input the authentication code that you see on your Apple TV screen to continue. And once you do, then it will set up all of the settings such as Wi-Fi, your Apple ID, iCloud, all of that, it's really quite awesome. And any passwords that you have to confirm, like your Apple ID, will be done on your device so you don't have to try to fiddle with the little Apple TV remote to input any sort of text. All right, and there we go. I just went through a few more screens on the Apple TV 4K, and it's actually asking us if we wanna try HDR. So we can go ahead and tap on try HDR. It says that they're going to check if my TV supports it. I pretty much know that it probably won't, but we're just going to see if it will anyway. So we're going to click on that. And actually, surprisingly, it says your TV has been switched to HDR. So I'm going to click on OK. I didn't think that it would because for some reason, the PS4 Pro doesn't support 4K HDR on my TV, even though it is a 4K TV. And I also did the one home screen thing too. So that means all of the settings for this Apple TV were already stored in iCloud from my previous Apple TV. How cool is that? So I'm going to go over to settings really quick and I'm just going to conclude this video by going inside of video and audio and just showing you guys the different formats. So right now I can set it to 4K HDR or 4K SDR for standard dynamic range. So if your TV doesn't include support for HDR but it does for 4K, you can still use this TV which is absolutely great. There are a ton of other formats too including even 1080p and sub 1080p but really the only reason to get this 4K version of the Apple TV is if you do in fact have a 4K TV. So that's basically it guys. I just wanted to do a quick unboxing show you how you set it up, walk through some of the audio and video formats, and inform you of this thing's raw power. Because like I said, this is going to be the first device that includes support for both Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So you're going to get some really fantastic results with this thing, provided your TV's panel can keep up with it.